Chapter 20 Conception of the Transcendent Power of the Tathagatas Thereupon those hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of bodhisattvas equal to the dust atoms of a macrocosm who had issued from the gaps of the earth all stretched their joined hands towards the Lord and said unto him we, O Lord, will, after the complete extinction of the Tathagata, promulgate this Dharma Paryaya everywhere or on every occasion in all Buddha fields of the Lord, wherever or whenever the Lord shall be completely extinct. We are anxious to obtain this sublime Dharma Paryaya. O Lord, in order to keep, read, publish, and write it, thereupon, the hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of bodhisattvas headed by Mangusri. The monks, nuns, male and female lay devotees living in this world. The gods, nagas, goblins, gandharvas, demons, garudas, kinaras, great serpents, men and beings not human, and the many bodhisattvas, mahasattvas equal to the sands of the river Ganges said unto the Lord, We also, O Lord, will promulgate this Dharma Pariyaya after the complete extinction of the Tathagata, while standing with an invisible body in the sky. O Lord, we will send forth a voice and plant the roots of goodness of such creatures as have not yet planted roots of goodness. Then the Lord addressed the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Vishish Tak Aritra followed by a troop, a great troop, the master of a troop, who was the very first of those aforementioned bodhisattvas, mahasattvas, followed by a troop, a great troop, masters of a troop, very well, visish tak ar ritra, very well, so you should do, it is for the sake of this dharma paryaya, that the tathagata has brought you to ripeness, thereupon the lord Sakyamuni. Tathagata and the holy extinct Lord Prabhut Aratna, the Tathagata, both seated on the throne in the center of the stupa, commenced smiling to one another and from their opened mouths stretched out their tongues so that with their tongues they reached the Brahma world. And from those two tongues issued many hundred thousand myriads of kotis of rays. From each of those rays issued many hundred thousand myriads of kotis of bodhisattvas with gold-colored bodies and possessed of the 32 characteristic signs of a great man and seated on thrones consisting of the interior of lotuses. <coughs> those bodhisattvas spread in all directions in hundred thousands of worlds and while on every side stationed in the sky preached the law. Just as the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, produced a miracle of magic by his tongue, so too Prabhupada, the Tathagata, and the other Tathagatas, who, having flocked from hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of other worlds, were seated on thrones at the foot of jewel trees, by their tongues produced a miracle of magic. The Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, and all those Tathagatas produced that magical effect during fully a thousand years. After the lapse of that millennium, those Tathagatas pulled back their tongue, and all simultaneously at the same moment, the same instant, made a great noise as of expectoration and of snapping the fingers by which sounds all the hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of Buddha fields in every direction of space were moved, removed, stirred, wholly stirred, tossed, tossed forward, tossed along, and all beings in all those Buddha fields, gods, nagas, goblins, gandharvas, demons, garudas, kinaras, great serpents, men and beings not human, beheld by the power of the Buddha from the place where they stood this Saha world. They beheld the hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of Tathagatas seated severally on their throne at the foot of a jewel tree 
and the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, and the Lord Prabhutaratna, the Tathagata, wholly extinct, sitting on the throne in the center of the stupa of magnificent, precious substances, along with the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, they beheld finally those four classes of the audience. At this sight, they felt struck with wonder, amazement, and rapture, and they heard a voice from the sky calling, worthies beyond a distance, of an immense, incalculable number of hundred thousands of myriads of coatees of worlds. There is the world named Saha. There the Tathagata called Sakyamuni, the Arhat, is just now revealing to the Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, the Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law a sutranta of great extent serving to instruct bodhisattvas and belonging in proper to all buddhas ye accept it joyfully with all your heart and do homage to the lord sakyamuni the tathagata and the lord prabhutaratna the tathagata on hearing such a voice from the sky all those beings exclaimed from the place where they stood with joined hands homage to the Lord Sakyamuni the Tathagata then they threw towards the Saha world various flowers incense fragrant wreaths ointment gold cloth umbrellas flags banners and triumphal streamers as well as ornaments parures necklaces gems and jewels of all sorts in order to worship the Lord Sakyamuni the Tathagata and this Dharma Pariyaya of the lotus of the true law those flowers incense and those necklaces came down upon this saha world where they formed a great canopy of flowers hanging in the sky above the tathagatas there sitting as well as those in the hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of other worlds thereupon the lord addressed the bodhisattvas and mahasattvas headed by visash takaritra inconceivable young men of good family is the power of the Tathagatas in order to transmit this Dharma Pariyaya young men of good family I might go on for hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of aeons explaining the manifold virtues of this Dharma Pariyaya through the different principles of the law without reaching the end of those virtues in this Dharma Pariyaya I have succinctly taught all Buddha laws or Buddha qualities all the superiority, all the mystery, all the profound conditions of the Buddhas. Therefore, young men of good family, you should, after the complete extinction of the Tathagata, with reverence, keep, read, promulgate, cherish, worship it. And wherever on earth, young men of good family, this Dharma Pariyaya shall be made known, read, written, meditated, expounded, studied, or collected into a volume, be it in a monastery or at home, in the wilderness, or in a town, at the foot of a tree, or in a palace, in a building, or in a cavern, on that spot one should erect a shrine in dedication to the Tathagata. For such a spot must be regarded as a terrace of enlightenment. Such a spot must be regarded as one where all Tathagatas have arrived at supreme perfect enlightenment. On that spot have all Tathagatas moved forward the wheel of the law. On that spot one may hold that all Tathagatas have reached complete extinction. And on that occasion the Lord uttered the following stanzas. Inconceivable is the power to promote the will of the world, possessed by those who, firmly established in transcendent knowledge, by means of their unlimited sight, display their magic faculty in order to gladden all living beings on earth. They extend their tongue over the whole world, darting thousands of beams to the astonishment of those to whom this effect of magic is displayed and who are making for supreme enlightenment. The Buddhas made a noise of expectoration and of snapping the fingers, and by it called the attention of the whole world, of all parts of the world in the ten directions of space. Those and other miraculous qualities they display in their benevolence and compassion with the view that the creatures gladly excited 
at the time may also keep the sutra after the complete extinction of the Sugata. Even if I continued for thousands of Kotis of aeons speaking the praise of those sons of Sugata, who shall keep this eminent sutra after the extinction of the leader of the world, I should not have terminated the enumeration of their qualities, inconceivable, as the qualities of infinite space are the merits of those who constantly keep this holy sutra. They behold me as well as these chiefs and the leader of the world now extinct. They behold all these numerous bodhisattvas in the four classes. Such a one now here propitiates me and all these leaders as well as the extinct chief of Ginas and the others in every quarter. The future and past Buddhas stationed in the ten points of space will all be seen and worshipped by him who keeps this sutra. He who keeps this sutra, the veritable law. We'll fathom the mystery of the highest man. We'll soon comprehend what truth it was that was arrived at on the terrace of enlightenment. The quickness of his apprehension will be unlimited. Like the wind, he will nowhere meet impediments. He knows the purport and interpretation of the law. He who keeps this exalted sutra. He will, after some reflection, always find out the connection of the sutras spoken by the leaders. Even after the complete extinction of the leader, he will grasp the real meaning of the sutras. He resembles the moon and the sun. He illuminates all around him. And while roaming the earth in different directions, he rouses many bodhisattvas. The wise bodhisattvas, who after hearing the enumeration of such advantages, shall keep this sutra after my complete extinction will doubtless reach enlightenment. Chapter 21. Spells. Thereupon the bodhisattva Mahasattva Bhaisagiraga rose from his seat and having put his upper robe upon one shoulder and fixed the right knee upon the ground lifted his joined hands up to the Lord and said how great O Lord is the pious merit which will be produced by a young man of good family or a young lady who keeps this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law either in memory or in a book whereupon the Lord said to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Baisha Giraga, suppose Baisha Giraga that some man of good family or a young lady honors, respects, reveres, worships hundred thousands of myriads of Kotis of Tathagatas equal to the sands of eighty Ganges rivers. Dost thou think, Baisha Giraga, that such a young man or young lady of good family will on that account produce much pious merit? The Bodhisattva by Shagariraga replied, Yes, Lord, yes, Sugata. The Lord said, I announce to thee, by Shagiraga, I declare to thee any young man or young lady of good family, by Shagiraga, who shall keep, read, comprehend, and in practice follow. Were it but a single stanza from this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law, that young man or young lady of good family, by Shagiraga, will on that account produce far more pious merit. Then the Bodhisattva Mahasattva by Shagiraga immediately said to the Lord, to those young men or young ladies of good family, O Lord, who keep this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law in their memory or in a book, we will give talismanic words for guard, defense, and protection, such as Anye, Manye, Mane, Mamane, Kita, Karita, Same, Sametavi, Sante, Mukte, Muktateme, Seme Aveshame, Samesame, Gaye, Kishaye, Akshine, Santi, Sani, Dharani, Alokabashi, Pratye Vakshani, Nidini, Abhyanta Varasishite, Utkeli, Mutkeli, Asade, Parate, Sukhankshi, Asamasame, Buddha Vilokite, Dharma Parikshite, Sangha Nirgoshani, Nirgoshani, Baya Bayasadone, Mantri, Manchak Shayate, Ruta Kausele, Akshaye, Akshavanataya, Vakuli Valoda, Amanyatea, these words of charms and spells, O Lord, have been pronounced by reverend Buddhas in number. 
equal to the sands of 62 Ganges rivers. All these Buddhas would be offended by anyone who would attack such preachers, such keepers of the Sutranta. The Lord expressed his approval to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva by Shagiraga by saying, Very well, by Shagiraga, by those talismanic words being pronounced. Out of compassion for creatures, the common well of creatures is promoted. Their guard, defense, and protection is secured. Thereupon the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Pradhanasira said unto the Lord, I also, Lord, will, for the benefit of such preachers, give them talismanic words, that no one seeking for an occasion to surprise such preachers may find the occasion, be it a demon, giant, goblin, sorcerer, amp, or ghost, that none of these when seeking and spying for an occasion to surprise may find the occasion. And then the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Pradhanasira instantly pronounced the following words of a spell. Gavail Maha Gavail Uke Muke Ade Adavati Triite Triti Avati Etini Vitini Kitini Triti Triti Avati Savaha these talismanic words, O Lord, have been pronounced and approved by Tathagatas in number equal to the sands of the river Ganges. All those Tathagatas would be offended by anyone who would attack such preachers. Thereupon, Vice Ravana, one of the four rulers of the cardinal points, said unto the Lord, I also, O Lord, will pronounce talismanic words for the benefit and well of those preachers out of compassion to them for their guard, defense, and protection. Ate, Nate, Vanate, Anadi, Naji, Kunadi, Shiva. With these spells, O Lord, I shall guard those preachers over an extent of a hundred yoganas. Thus will those young men or young ladies of good family who keep this sutranta be guarded, be safe. At that meeting was present Virudaka, another of the four rulers of the cardinal points, sitting surrounded and attended by hundred thousands of myriads of Kotis of Kumbandas. He rose from his seat, put his upper robe upon one shoulder, lifted his joined hands up to the Lord, and spoke to him as follows. I also, Lord, will pronounce talismanic words for the benefit of people at large, and to guard, defend, protect such preachers as are qualified, who keep the Sutranta as mentioned. Agan, Gane, Gauri, Gondari, Kandali, Mantangi, Pukasi, Senkuli, Virusali, Savaha. These talismanic words of the Lord have been pronounced by 4,200,000 myriads of Kotis of Buddhas. All those Buddhas would be offended by anyone who would attack such preachers as are qualified. Thereupon the giantesses called Lamba, Vilamba, Kutandanti, Pushpadanti, Mukandandanti, Kasini, Akala, Maladari, Kunti, Sarvasvatagahari, and Hariti, all with their children and sweet, went up to the place where the Lord was. And with one voice said unto him, We also, O Lord, will afford guard, defense, and protection to such preachers as keep this Sutranta. We will afford them safety, that no one seeking for an occasion to surprise those preachers may find the occasion. And the giantesses all simultaneously and in a chorus gave to the Lord the following words of spells. Iti me, iti me, iti me, iti me, iti me. Nime, 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 nime. Ruhe, 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 ruhe. Stuhe, stuhi, 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 savaha. No one shall overpower and hurt such creatures, no goblin, giant, ghost, devil, imp, sorcerer, specter, no. No spirit causing epilepsy. No sorcerer of goblin race, no sorcerer of not human race, no sorcerer of human race, no sorcerer producing tertian ague, quartian ague, quotidian ague. Even if in his dreams he has visions of women, men, boys, or girls, it shall be impossible that they hurt him. And the giantesses simultaneously and in a chorus address the Lord with the following stanzas. His head shall be split into seven pieces like a sprout of Simplocos rasamosa who after hearing the spell would attack a preacher. He shall go the way of parasites and matricides, who would attack a preacher. 
He shall go the way of oil millers and sesame pounders who would attack a preacher. He shall go the way of those who use false weights and measures who would attack a preacher. Thereafter the giantess is headed by Kunti, said unto the Lord, We also, O Lord, will afford protection to such preachers. We will procure them safety. We will protect them against assault and poison. Whereupon the Lord said to those giantesses, Very well, sisters, very well. You do well in affording guard, defense, and protection to those preachers. Even to such who shall keep no more than the name of this Dharma Pariyaya. How much more, then, to those who shall keep this Dharma Pariyaya wholly and entirely, or who, possessing the text of it in a volume, honor it with flowers, incense, fragrant garlands, ointment, powder, cloth, flags, banners, lamps with sesame oil, lamps with scented oil, lamps with kampaka scented oil, with varshika scented oil, with lotus scented oil, with jasmine scented oil, who by such like manifold hundred thousand manners of worshipping shall honor, respect, revere, venerate this sutra, deserve to be guarded by thee and thy sweet Kunti. And while this chapter on spells was being expounded, 68,000 living beings received the faculty of acquiescence in the law that has no origin. Chapter 22 Ancient Devotion of Baisha Gyaraga. Thereupon, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Naksha Tra Raga San Kosumitabhinina spoke to the Lord as follows Wherefore, O Lord, does the Bodhisattva Vaishagaya Raga pursue his course in this Saha world while he is fully aware of the many hundred thousands of myriads of Kotis of difficulties he has to meet? Let the Lord the Tathagata deign to tell us any part of the course of duty of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Baisha Gyaraga, that by hearing it the gods, nagas, goblins, Gandharvas, demons, Garudas, Kinaras, great serpents, men and beings not human, as well as Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas from other worlds here present, and these great disciples here may be content delighted, overjoyed. And the Lord, out of regard to that request of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Nakshatra Ragasan Kusumita Bhigna, told him the following, Of your young man of good family at a past epoch, at a time as many aeons ago as there are grains of sand in the river Ganges, there appeared in the world a Tathagata by the name of Khandra Vimala Surya Prabhasasri, endowed with science and conduct. A Sugata. Now that Tathagata Khandra Vimala Surya Prabhasasri had a great assembly of eighty Kotis of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, and an assembly of disciples equal to the sands of seventy two Ganges rivers. His spiritual rule was exempt from the female sex, and his Buddha field had no hell, no brute creation, no ghosts, no demons. It was level, neat, smooth as the palm of the hand. Its floor consisted of heavenly lapis lazuli, and it was adorned with trees of jewel and sandalwood, inlaid with a multitude of jewels and hung with long bands of silk, and scented by censers made of jewels. Under each jewel tree, at a distance not farther than a bow shot, was made a small jewel house, and on the top of those small jewel houses stood a hundred coatees of angels performing a concert of musical instruments and castanets in order to honor the Lord Khandra Vima Lasurya Prabhasasri, the Tathagata, while that Lord was extensively expounding this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law. To the great disciples and bodhisattvas, directing himself to the bodhisattva, mahasattva, sarvasattva, priyadasarna. Now, nakshatara, raga, san, kusumita, vigna, the lifetime of that lord, khandra, vimala, surya, prabha, sasri, 
and south of Gotha lasted 42,000 aeons, and likewise that of the Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, and great disciples. It was under the spiritual rule of that Lord that the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Sarva, Sattva, Priyada, Hirsana, applied himself to his difficult course. He wandered 12,000 years strenuously engaged in contemplation. After the expiration of those 12,000 years, he acquired the samadhi termed Sarvarupasandarsana, the sight or display of all forms. No sooner had he acquired that samadhi than, satisfied, glad, joyful, rejoicing, delighted, he made the following reflection. It is owing to this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law that I have acquired the samadhi of Sarvarupasandarsana. Then he made another reflection. Let me do homage to the Lord Khandra Vimala Surya Prabha Sasri and this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law. No sooner had he entered upon such a meditation than a great rain of Mandarava and great Mandarava flowers fell from the upper sky. A cloud of Kalanusaran sandal was formed and a rain of Uragasara sandal poured down. And the nature of those essences was so noble that one karsha of it was worth the whole Saha world. After a while, Nakshataraga Sankosumita Bhigna, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana, rose from that meditation with memory and full consciousness and reflected thus. This display of magic power is not likely to honor the Lord and Tathagata so much as the sacrifice of my own body will do. Then the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priyasa Darsana instantly began to eat Agalacham, Alubanum, and the resin of Boswellia Therafira, and to drink oil of Kampaka. So Nakshatratagasan Kusumita Bhigna, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana, passed twelve years and always in constantly eating those fragrant substances and drinking oil of Kampaka. After the expiration of those twelve years, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana wrapped his body in divine garments, bathed it in oil, made his last vow, and thereafter burnt his own body with the object to pay worship to the Tathagata and this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law. Then Nakshatra Nagana San Kusumita Bhigna, eighty worlds equal to the Sands of the river Ganges were brightened by the glare of the flames from the blazing body of the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Sarvasattva, Priya, Darsana, and the eighty lords, Buddhas, equal to the sands of the Ganges in those worlds, all shouted their applause and exclaimed, Well done, well done, young man of good family. That is the real heroism which the Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas should develop. That is the real worship of the Tathagata, the real worship of the law. No worshipping with flowers, incense, fragrant wreaths, ointment, Powder, cloths, umbrellas, flags, banners, no worshipping with material gifts or with Uraga, Sara, Sandal equals it. This young man of good family is the sublimest gift, higher than the abandoning of royalty, the abandoning of beloved children and wife. Sacrificing one's own body, young man of good family, is the most distinguished, the chiefest, the best, the very best, and most sublime worship of the law. After pronouncing this speech, Naksha, Taraga, San, Kusum, Nida, those lords, Buddhas, were silent. The body of Sarvasattva Priya Darsana continued blazing for 12,000 years without ceasing to burn. After the expiration of those 12,000 years, the fire was extinguished. Then Nakshataraga Nasakasumita Bhigna, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana, having paid such worship to the Tathagatha, disappeared from that place and reappeared under the spiritual reign of that very Lord. Khandra Vimala Surya Prabha Sastri, the Tathagata in the house of King Vimaladatta by apparitional birth and sitting cross-legged. Immediately after his appearance, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana addressed his father and mother in the following stanza. 
This, O exalted king, is the walk in which I have acquired meditation. I have achieved a heroical feat, fulfilled a great vote by sacrificing my own dear body. After uttering the stanza, Nakshatara Gasan Kusumita Bigna, the Bodhisattva Masafa Sarvasafa Priya Darsana, said to his father and mother, Even now, father and mother, the Lord Khandar Vimala Surya Prabhasri, the Tathagata, is still living, existing, staying in the world, the Lord by worshipping whom I have obtained the spell of knowing all sounds. And this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law, consisting of eighty hundred thousand myriads of kotis of stanzas, of a hundred nayutas of vivaras, of a hundred vivaras which I have heard from that Lord. Therefore, father and mother, I should like to go to that Lord and worship him again, instantaneously. Nak Shatrag Raga San Kusumita Bigna. The Bodhisattva Masafa Sarvasafa Priya Darsana rose seven talas and high into the sky and sat cross legged on the top of a tower of seven precious substances. So he went up to the presence of that Lord and having approached him, humbly saluted him, circumambulated him seven times from left to right, stretched the joined hands towards the Lord, and after thus paying his homage, addressed him with the following stanza. O thou whose face is so spotless and bright, thou king and sage, how thy luster sparkles in all quarters, after having anciently paid thee homage. O Sugata, I now come again to behold thee, O Lord, having pronounced the stance of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Sarvasattva Priya Darsana, said to thee, Lord, Kandra Vimala Surya Prabhasasri, the Tathagata, thou art then still alive, Lord? Whereon the Lord Kandra Vimala Surya Prabhasasri the Tathagata replied, The time of my final extinction, young man of good family, has arrived. The time of my death has arrived. Therefore, young man of good family, prepare my couch. I'm going to enter complete extinction. Then, Nakshatra Ga San Kusumita Bigna, the Lord, Kandra Vimala Surya Prabhasasri, said to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Sarvasafa Priya Darsana, I entrust to thee, young man of good family, my commandment or mastership rule. I entrust to thee these Bodhisattvas, Mahasafas, these great disciples, this Buddha enlightenment, this world, these jewel cars, these jewel trees, and these angels, my servitors. I entrust to thee also, young man of good family, my relics after my complete extinction. Thou shouldest pay a great worship to my relics. Young man of good family, and also distribute them and build many thousands of stupas. And Naksha Traga San Kusumita Bigna, after the Lord Kandra Vima Lasurya Prabhasusri, the Tathagata, had given these instructions to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana. He, in the last watch of the night, entered absolute final extinction. Thereupon, Nakshatara Gasan Kusumita Bhagna, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana, perceiving that the Lord Kendra Vimala Surya Prabhasri, the Tathagata had expired, made a pyre of Irigasara sandalwood and burnt the body of the Tathagata. When he saw that the body was burnt to ashes and the fire extinct, he took the bones and wept, cried, and lamented. <coughs> After having wept, cried, and lamented, Nakshatra Ragasana Kusumita Bigna, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana, caused to be made 84,000 urns of seven precious substances, deposed in them the bones of the Tathagata, found at 84,000 stupas, reaching in height to the Brahma world, adorned with a row of umbrellas, and equipped with silk bands and bells. After founding those stupas, he made the following reflection. I have paid honor to the Tathagata relics of the Lord Khandra Vimala Surya Prabhasasri, but I will pay to those relics a yet loftier and most distinguished honor. Then, Nakshatara Gasana Kusumati Bhagniya, 
the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana, addressed that entire assembly of Bodhisattvas, those great disciples, those gods, Nagas, goblins, Gandharvas, demons, Garudas, Kinaras, great servants, men, and beings not human. Ye all, young men of good family, unanimously vow to pay worship to the relics of the Lord. Immediately after, Nakshatra, Ragasan, Kusumi, Taba, Bigna, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva, Priya Darsana, in presence of those 84,000 stupas, burnt his own arm, which was marked by the 100 auspicious signs, and so paid worship to those stupas, containing the relics of the Tathagata during 72,000 years. And while paying worship, he educated countless hundred thousands of myriads of cotis of disciples from that assembly. In consequence, whereof all those bodhisattvas acquired the samadhi term, Sarva Rupasan Darsana. Then Naishat Ra Ra Gasan Kusumita Bigna The entire assembly of Bodhisattvas and all great disciples, seeing the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarva Sattva Priya Darsana deprived of a limb, said with tears in their eyes, weeping, crying, lamenting. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarva Sattva Priya Darsana our master and instructor is now deprived of a limb, deprived of one arm. But the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana addressed those Bodhisattvas, great disciples and angels in the following terms. Do not young men of good family weep, cry, lament at the sight of my being deprived of one arm. All the Lord's Buddhas who be, exist, live in the endless limitless worlds in every direction of space have I taken to witness. Before their face have I pronounced a vow of truth, and by that truth, by that word of truth, shall I, after the sacrifice of my own arm in honor of the Tathagata, have a body of gold color. <clears throat> by this truth, by this word of truth, let this arm of mine become such as it was before, and let the great earth shake in six different ways, and let the angels in the sky pour down a rain of flowers. No sooner Nakshatra Gasan Kusumi Tabigna had the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana made that vow of truth. Then the whole triple macrocosm was shaken in six different ways, and from the sky aloft fell a great rain of flowers. The arm of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana became again as it was before, and that by the power of knowledge and by the power of pious merit belonging to that Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Perhaps Nashata Raga San Kusumita Bigna, thou wilt have some doubt, uncertainty, or misgiving, and think that the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana at that time and at that e epoch was another. But do not think so for the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Baisha Gayaraga here was at that time and that epoch the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Sarvasattva Priya Darsana. So many hundred thousand myriads of cotis of difficult things. Nakshaturagasan kusumita bigna. And sacrifices of his body does this bodhisattva masafa sarva safa darsana accomplish. Now, nakshaturagasan kusumita bigna. The young man or young lady of good family, striving in the bodhisattva vehicle towards the goal and longing for supreme perfect enlightenment who at the Tathagata shrine shall burn a great toe, a finger, a toe, or a whole limb. Such a young man or young lady of good family, I assure thee, shall produce far more pious merit, far more than results from giving up a kingdom, sons, daughters, and wives, the whole triple world with its woods, oceans, mountains, springs, streams, tanks, wells, and gardens. And Nakshataraga San Kusumi Tabigna, the young man or young lady of good family striving in the Bodhisattva vehicle for the goal, who after filling with the seven precious substances this whole triple world, should give it in alms to all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, disciples, Pratyaka Buddhas, that young man or young lady of good family, Nakshataraga San Kusumi Tabigna, does not produce so much pious merit. As a young man, a young lady of good family who shall keep, were it but a single verse from this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law. 
I positively declare that the accumulation of merit of the latter is greater than if a person, after filling the whole triple world with the seven precious substances, bestows in it alms on all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, disciples, or Prati, Ke Buddhas. <clears throat> Just as the great ocean, Nakshat, Ra Ra, Gasan Kusumita, Bigna surpasses all springs, streams, and tanks. So, Nakshatara, Ragasan, Kusumita, Bigna, this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law surpasses all sutras spoken by the Tathagata. Just as the Sumeru, the king of the mountains, Nakshatara, Ragasan, Kusumita, Bigna, all elevations at the cardinal points, horizon circles, and great horizons. So, Nakshatara Gasan Kusumita Bigna, this Dharmaparyaya of the Lotus of the True Law surpasses as a king all the sutrantas spoken by the Tathagata. As the moon, Nakshatara Gasan Kusumita Bigna, as a luminary, takes the first rank amongst the whole of the asterisms. So, Nakshatara Gasan Kusumita Bigna, this Dharmaparyaya of the Lotus of the True Law ranks first amongst all sutrantas spoken by the Tathagata, though it surpasses hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of moons. As the orb of the sun, Nakshataraga San Kusumita Bigna, dispels gloomy darkness, so Nakshataraga San Kusumita Bigna, this Dharma Prayaya of the Lotus of the True Law, dispels all the gloomy darkness of unholy works. As Indra, Nakshaturaga San Kusumita Bigna is the chief of the gods of paradise, so Nakshaturaga San Kusumita Bigna. This Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law is the chief of Sutranta spoken by the Tathagata. As Brahma Sahampati, Nakshaturaga San Kusumita Bigna is the king of all Brahma Kayika gods and exercises the function of a father in the Brahma world, so Nakshaturaga San Kusumita Bigna, this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law, exercises the function of a father to all beings. Whether under training or past, it to all disciples, Pratyaka Buddhas, and those who in the Bodhisattva vehicle are striving for the goal. As the Srota Apana, Nakshaturaga San Kusumita Bigna, as well as the Sakra Dagaman, Anagaman, Arhat, and Pratyaka Buddha excels the ignorant people in the profanum vulgus. So, Nakshataraga San Kusumita Bigna. The Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law must be held to excel and surpass all sutrantas spoken by the Tathagata. And such as shall keep this king of sutras, Nakshataraga San Kusumita Bigna must be held to surpass others who do not, as a bodhisattva is an accounted superior to all disciples and Pratyaka Buddhas. So, Nakshatraga San Kusumita Bigna, this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law is accounted superior to all sutras spoken by the Tathagata. Even as the Tathagata is the crowned king of the law of all disciples, Pratyaka Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, so Nakshataraga Sakusimita Bigna, this Dharma Paryaya, is a Tathagata in respect to those who, in the vehicle of the Bodhisattvas, are striving to reach the goal. This Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus, the true law, Nakshataraga Sakusimita Bigna, saves all beings from all fear, delivers them from all pains. It is like a tank for the thirsty, like a fire for those who suffer from cold, like a garment for the naked, like the caravan leader for the merchants, <clears throat> like a mother for her children, like a boat for those who ferry over, like a leech for the sick, like a lamp for those who are wrapped in darkness, like a jewel for those who want wealth, like the ocean from the rivers, like a torch for the dispelling of darkness. So. Nakshataraga San Kusimita Bigna, this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law, delivers from all evils, extirpates all diseases, releases from the narrow bonds of the mundane world. And he who shall hear this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law, who shall write it and cause it to be written, will produce an accumulation of pious merit, the term of which is not to be arrived at even by Buddha knowledge. 
So great is the accumulation of pious merit that will be produced by a young man of good family or a young lady, who after teaching or learning it, writing it or having it collected into a volume, shall honor, respect, venerate, worship it with flowers, incense, fragrant garlands, ointment, powder, umbrellas, flags, banners, triumphal streamers, with music, with joined hands, with lamps, burning with ghee, scented oil, kumpaka oil, jasmine oil, trumpet flower oil, farshika oil, or double jasmine oil. Great will be the pious merit, Nakshaturaga Sankusimita Bigna, to be produced by a young man of good family or young lady striving to keep reach the goal in the Bodhisattva vehicle, who shall keep this chapter, the ancient devotion of Vaisha Gigaraga, who shall read and learn it. <coughs> and Nakshatura Raga, should a female, after hearing this Dharma Paryaya, grasp and keep it, then this existence will be her last existence as a woman. Any female, Nakshaturaga San Kusimita Bigna, who in the last 500 years of the millennium shall hear and penetrate this chapter of the ancient devotion of Baisha Giraga, will, after disappearing from earth, be reborn in the world, Sukhavati, where the Lord Amitayas, that's how they got to dwell, exists, lives, surrounded by a host of bodhisattvas. There will he, who formerly was a female, appear seated on a throne, consisting of the interior of a lotus, no affection, no hatred, no infatuation, no pride, no envy, no wrath, no malignity will vex him. With his birth, he will also receive the five transcendent faculties, as well as the acquiescence in the eternal law. And once in possession thereof, Nakshatara Ragasan Kusimita Bigna, he as a Bodhisattva Mahasattva will see Tathagatas equal to the sands of 72 rivers Ganges. So perfect will be his organ of sight that by means thereof he shall see those Lord's Buddhas, which Lord's Buddhas will applaud him and say, Well done, well done, young man of good family, that after hearing this Dharma, Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law, which has been promulgated by the spiritual proclamation of the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, thou hast studied, meditated, examined, minded it, and expounded it to other beings or other persons. This accumulation of thy pious merit, young man of good family, cannot be burnt by fire nor swept away by water. Even a thousand Buddhas would not be able to determine this accumulation of thy pious merit, young man of good family. Thou hast subdued the opposition of the evil one, young man of good family. Thou, young man of good family, hast victoriously emerged from the battle of mundane existence, hast crushed the enemies in knowing thee, thou, young man of good family, hast been superintended by thousands of Buddhas. Thine equal, young man of good family, is not to be found in the world, including the gods, with the only exception of the Tathagata. There is no other, be he disciple, Pratyaka Buddha, or Bodhisattva, able to surpass thee in pious merit, knowledge, wisdom, or meditation, such a power of knowledge. Naksha Traragasan Kusumita Bigna will be acquired by that Bodhisattva. Anyone, Naksha Traragasan Kusumita Bigna, who on hearing this chapter of the ancient devotion of Baisha Giraga proves it, will emit from his mouth a breath sweet as of the lotus, and from his limbs a fragrance as of sandalwood. Such temporal advantages as I have just now indicated will belong to him who approves this Dharma Paryaya. On that account, then, Nakshatragasan Kusumita Bigno, I transmit to thee this chapter of the ancient devotion of the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Sarvasattva, Priya Darsana, that at the end of time, the last period, in the latter half of the millennium, it may have course here in Gambudvipa, and not be lost, that neither Mora, the fiend, nor the celestial beings called Morakaikas, Nagas, goblins, imps may find the opportunity of hurting it. Therefore, Nakshataragasana Kusumita Bigna, I bequeath this Dharma Paryaya. It is to be like a mendicament for sick and suffering creatures in Gambudvipa. <coughs> no sickness shall overpower him who has heard this Dharma Paryaya, no decrepitude, no untimely death. 
Whenever a person striving to reach the goal in the vehicle of bodhisattvas happens to see such a monk as keeps his sutranta, then he should strew him with sandal powder and blue lotuses and reflect thus. This young man of good family is going to reach the terrace of enlightenment. He will spread the bundle of grass on the terrace of enlightenment. He will put to flight the party of Mara. Blow the conch, trumpet of the law, beat the drum of the law, cross the ocean of existence. Thus, Nakshaturaga san kasumita bigna, should a young man of good family striving to reach the goal in the vehicle of Bodhisattva reflect when seeing a monk who keeps the sutra, and he will acquire such advantages as have been indicated by the Tathagata. While this chapter of the ancient devotion of Bhaisagiraga was being expounded, 84,000 bodhisattvas attained the spell connected with skill in all sounds. And the Lord Prabhutaratna, the Tathagata, intimated his approval by saying, Well done, well done, Nakshatraga san kusumita bigna. Thou hast done well in thus questioning the Tathagata, who is endowed with such inconceivable qualities and properties. Chapter 23 God Gada Zvara at that moment, the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, darted a flash of light from the circle of hair between his eyebrows. One of the characteristic signs of a great man by which flash of light, hundred thousands of myriads of Kotis of Buddha fields, equal to the sands of eighteen rivers Ganges, became illuminated. Beyond those Buddha fields, equal, is the world called Vairokanara Smitpratimna Andita. I.e. embellished with the rays of the sun, there dwells and lives exists the Tathagata named Kamala Dala Vimalana Ka Shataraga Sanak Usumitambigna, who is surrounded and attended by a large and immense assembly of bodhisattvas, preached the law. Immediately the ray of light flashing from the circle of hair between the eyebrows of the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, filled the world, Bairo Kanara Smipratima Andita with a great luster. In that world, Vairo Kanaras Meet Pratimandita, there was a Bodhisattva Mahasattva called Gadgadasvara, who had planted roots of goodness, who had before seen similar luminous flashes emitted by many Tathagatas, and who had acquired many Samatis, such as the Samadhi, Deva, Ga, Grakaira, i.e. bracelet at the upper end of the banner staff, Siddharma, Pundarika, i.e. the lotus of the true law. Vim Aladatta given by Vimala Nakshatra Raga Vikridita i.e. sport of the king of asterisms, the moon god. Analamba Ganaga Namudra the seal of science Khandra Pradipa the moonlight Sarvaruta Kausala skill in all sounds Sarva Punya Sam Ukyaya, Compendium or Collection of All Piety, Prasadavati, the Favorably Disposed Lady, Ridi Vikrididia, the Sport of Magic, Gananoka, the Torch of Knowledge, Vayuharaga, the King of Expansions or Speculations, Vimala Prabha, Spotless Luster, Vimala Garba, Spotless Interior Part, Apkristna, Surya Varta, sun turned. In short, he had acquired many hundred thousand myriads of Kotis of Samadhis, equal to the sands of the river Ganges. Now the flash of light came down upon that Bodhisattva Mahasattva, God God Asvara. Then the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, God God Asvara, rose from his seat, put his upper robe upon one shoulder, fixed his right knee on the ground, stretched his joined hands toward the Lord Buddha and said to the Tathagata, Kamala Dala, Vimalana Kshatararagasan Kusumita Bhidna. O Lord, I would resort to the Sat world to see, salute, wait upon the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, to see and salute Manguzri, the Prince Royal, to see the Bodhisattvas, Baisha Giraga, Prada Nasura, Naksha, Tra Ragasan Kusumita Bhidna, Vishta Takaritra Viraga Vaishagiraga Samukta Vaishagiraga Samud Gata. Then the Lord Kamala Dala Vimalanak Shatraga 
San Kusumitabigna, the Tathagata said to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadasvara, On coming to the Saha world, young man of good family, thou must not conceive a low opinion of it. That world, young man of good family, has ups and downs, consists of earth, is replete with mountains of Kala, filled with gutters. The Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, is short of stature, and so are the Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas. Whereas thou, young man of good family, hast got a body 4,200,000 Yoganas high, and myself have got a body 6,800,000 Yoganas high. And young man of good family, thou art lovely, handsome, of pleasant appearance, endowed with a full bloom of extremely fine color, and abundantly blessed with hundred thousands of holy signs. Therefore then, young man of good family, when you have come to the Saha world, do not conceive a low opinion of the Tathagata, nor of the Bodhisattvas, nor of that Buddha field. <clears throat> Thus addressed, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgad Asvara said to the Lord Kamala Dala Vimalana Kasharatarara Gasan Kusumata Bigna, the Tathagata, I shall do Lord as the Lord commands, I shall go to that Saha world, by virtue of the Lord's resolution, of the Lord's power, of the Lord's might, of the Lord's disposal, of the Lord's foresight. Whereon the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgad Asvara, without leaving that Buddha field and without leaving his seat plunged into so deep a meditation that immediately after, on a sudden, there appeared before the Tathagata on the grid Rakuta Mountains in the Saha world, 8,400,000 myriads of kotis of lotuses on gold stalks with silver leaves, and with cups of the hue of rosy lotuses and butia frondosa. On seeing the appearance of this mass of lotuses, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Mangusri, the Prince Royal, asked the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, by what cause and by whom, O Lord, have been produced these 8,400,000 myriads of kotis of lotuses on gold stalks with silver leaves and with cups of the hue of rosy lotuses and butia frondosa? Whereon the Lord replied to Mangusri, the Prince Royal, It is Mangusri, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadasvara, who accompanied and attended the 8,400,000 myriads of kotis of bodhisattvas arrived from the east, from the world, Viro Kanara, Smi, Pratimandita, the Buddha field of the Lord Kamalandal, Lavimanalanaka, Shatarara, Kasan Kusumatibabhigna, Tathagata. <laughs> At this sour world, to see, salute, wait upon me, and to hear this Dharmapayaya, the lotus of the true law. <clears throat> then Mangusri, the prince royal, said to the Lord, What mass of roots of goodness, O Lord, has that young man of good family collected, that he has deserved to obtain such a distinction? And what meditation is it, O Lord, that the Bodhisattva practices? Let us also learn that meditation, O Lord, and practice that meditation. And let us see that Bodhisattva, Lord, see how the color, outward shape, character, figure, and behavior of that Bodhisattva is. <clears throat> May the Lord deign to produce such a token, that the Bodhisattva Mahasattva be admonished by it to come to this Saha world. Then the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, said to the Lord Prabhupada, the Tathagata, who is completely extinct, Produce such a token, Lord, that the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadasvara be admonished by it to come to this Saha world. And the Lord Prabhu Taratna, the Tathagata, who was completely extinct, instantly produced a token in order to admonish the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadasvara and said, Come, young man of good family, to this Saha world. Mangusri, the Prince Royal, will hail thy coming. And the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadasvara after humbly saluting the feet of the Lord Kamala Dala Vilonika Tathagata, and after three times circumambulating him from left to right, vanished from the world, Viro Kanara Smitur Andita, along with 8,400,000 myriads of Kotis of Bodhisattvas, who surrounded and followed him and arrived at the sour world among a stir of Buddha fields, a rain of lotuses, a noise of hundred thousands of myriads of Kotis of musical instruments. His face showed eyes resembling blue lotuses, his body was gold-colored, his person marked by a hundred thousand of holy signs, he sparkled with luster, glowed with radiance, had limbs marked by the characteristic signs, and a body compact as Narayanis. Mounted on the tower made of seven precious substances, he moved through the sky to a height of seven talas, surrounded by a host of bodhisattvas. In the direction of this Saha world and approach the Gridrakuta, the king of mountains. 
At his arrival he alighted from the tower, and went with a necklace of pearls worth a hundred thousands, to the place where the Lord was sitting. After humbly saluting the feet of the Lord, and circumambulating him seven times, from left to right, he offered him the necklace of pearls in token of homage. Whereafter he said to the Lord, The Lord, Kamaladala Vimala, Nakshatra Raga Sanukumasimitua Vigna, Tatigata, inquires after the Lord's health, welfare, and sprightliness, whether he feels free from affliction and at ease. That Lord has also charged me to ask, Is there something thou hast to suffer or allow? The humors of the body are not in a favorable state. The creatures are decent in manners, tractable, and easy to be healed. Their bodies are clean. They are not too passionate. I hope not too irascible, not too unwise in their doings. They are not jealous, Lord, not envious, not ungrateful to their father and mother, not impious, not heterodox, not unsubdued in mind, not unrestrained in sexual desires. Are the creatures able to resist the evil one? Has the Lord, Prabhu Taratna, the Tathagata, who is completely extinct, come to the Saha world in order to hear the law, sitting in the center of a stupa made of seven precious substances? And as to that, Lord Prabhu Taratna, and Tathagata, the Lord Kemaladala Vimala Na Kasha Tarataka Kusamitimibhigna, inquires, Is there something that the Lord Prabhu Taratna has to suffer or allow as the Lord Prabhu Taratna to stay long? We also, Lord, are desirous of seeing the rudimentary frame of that Lord Prabhu Taratna. The Tathagata. May the Lord therefore please to show us the rudimentary frame of the Lord Prabhu Taratna and the Tathagata. Then Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, said to the Lord Prabhu Taratna, the Tathagata, who is completely extinct, Lord the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgad Asvara here wishes to see the Lord Prabhu Taratna, the Tathagata, who is completely extinct. Whereon the Lord Prabhu Taratna, the Tathagata, spoke to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgad Asvara in this strain. Well done, well done, young gentleman, that thou hast come hither in the desire to see the Lord Sakyamuni of the Tathagata. And to hear this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law and Seaman Gruzi, the Prince Royal. Subsequently, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Padmasri said to the Lord, What root of goodness has the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgad Asvara formerly planted? And in presence of which Tathagata? And the Lord Sakyamuni the Tathagata said to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Padmasri, In the days of your young man of good family, at a past period, there appeared in the world a Tathagata called Mega Dundub Isvararaga, the king of the drum sound of the clouds, perfectly enlightened, endowed with science and conduct, a Sugata, in the world of Sarva Buddha Sandarsana, i.e., sight or display of all Buddhas, in the Aeon Priya Darsana. To that Lord Megundundub Hisvararaga, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgad Asvara, paid homage by making resound hundred thousands of musical instruments during twelve thousand years. He presented to him also eighty four thousand vessels of seven precious substances. Under the preaching of the Tathagata, Megundundub Hisvararaga, young man of good family, has the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgad Asvara. Obtain such a beauty as he now displays. Perhaps, young man of good family, thou hast some doubt, uncertainty, or misgiving, and thinkest that at that time, that epoch, there was another Bodhisattva Mahasattva called Gadgadisvara, who paid that homage to Lord Megandundubus of Araga, Tathagata, and presented him the eighty four thousand vessels. But, young man of good family, do not think so, for it was the very same Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadisvara. Young man of good family who paid that homage to the Lord Megundudubis of Viraga, the Tathagata, and presented him to the 84,000 vessels. So, young man of good family, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gedgadisvara, has waited upon many Buddhas, has planted good roots under many Buddhas, and prepared the soil under each of them. And this Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gedgadisvara had previously seen Lord's Buddhas similar to the sands of the river Ganges. Dost thou see, Padmasri? How the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gad Gadisvara now looks? Padmasri replied, I do, Lord. I do, Sugata. The Lord said, Now, Padmasri, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gad Gadisvara preaches this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law under many shapes. 
he assumes, sometimes under the shape of Brahma, sometimes under that of Indra, sometimes under that of Siva, sometimes under that of Kubera, sometimes under that of a sovereign, sometimes under that of a duke, sometimes under that of a chief merchant, sometimes under that of a citizen, sometimes under that of a villager, sometimes under that of a Brahmin, sometimes again the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Gedgadisvara preaches this Dharma Prayaya of the lotus of the true law under a monk's shape, sometimes under a, man, a nun's, sometimes under a male lay devotee's, sometimes under a female lay devotee's, sometimes under that of a chief merchant's wife, sometimes under that of a citizen's wife, sometimes under a boy's, sometimes under a girl's shape, with so many variations in the manner to show himself, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gedgadisvara preaches this Dharma Prayaya of the lotus of the true law to creatures. He has even assumed the shape of a goblin to preach this Dharma Prayaya to such as were to be converted by a goblin. To some he has preached this Dharma Prayaya of the Lotus of the True Law under the shape of a demon, to some under a Garudas, to some under a Kinaras, to some under a great serpent's shape, even to the beings in any of the wretched states, in the hells, the brute creation, Yama's realm, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gedgadisvara is a supporter. Even to the creatures in the gynoceums of this Saha world has the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadisvara, after metamorphosing himself into a woman, preached this Dharma Prayaya of the Lotus of the True Law. Verily, Padmasri, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadisvara, is the supporter of the creatures living in the Saha world under so many shapes assumed at will. Has the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gad Gadisvara preached this Dharma Prayaya of the Lotus of the True Law to creatures? Yet there is no diminution of wisdom, nor diminution of magic power in that good man. So many young men of good family are the manifestations of knowledge by which this Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gad Gadisvara has made himself known in the Saha world. In other worlds also, similar to the sands of the river Ganges, he preaches the law under the shape of a bodhisattva to such as must be converted by a bodhisattva. Under the shape of a disciple to such as must be converted by a disciple. Under the shape of a pratyaka buddha to such as must be converted by a pratyaka buddha. Under the shape of a tathagata to such as must be converted by a tathagata. Nay, he will show to those who must be converted by a relic of the tathagata himself such a relic. And to those who must be converted by complete extinction, he will show himself completely extinct. Such is the powerful knowledge, Padmasri, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva is possessed of. Thereafter, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Padmasri said to the Lord, The Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Gadgadisvara, then has planted good roots, Lord. What meditation is it, Lord, whereby the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Gadgadisvara, with unshaken firmness, has converted or educated so many creatures. Whereupon, the Lord Sakyamuni the Tathagata replied to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Padmasri, It is, young man of good family, the meditation termed Sarvaru Pasandarsana. By steadiness in it, has the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gadgadasvara so immensely promoted the well of creatures. While this chapter of Gadgadasvara was being expounded, all the 8,400,000 myriads of Kotis of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, who along with the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Gadgadisvara, had come to the Saha world, obtained the meditation Sarvaru Pasandarsana. And as the number of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas of this Saha world obtaining the meditation Sarvu or Pasandarsana, it was beyond calculation. Then the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Gadgadisvara, after having paid great and ample worship to the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, and at the stoop of relics to the Lord Prabhu Taratna, the Tathagata mounted the tower made of seven precious substances. Among the stir of the fields, the rain of lotuses, the noise of hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of musical instruments, and with the eighty-four hundred thousand myriads of kotis of bodhisattvas surrounding and following, returned to his own Buddha field. At his arrival there, he said to the Lord 
Kamala Dala Vimala Naksha Taratga Sanku Sumita Bigna Natalagada etc. O Lord, I have in the Saha world promoted the well of creatures. I have seen and saluted the stupa of relics of the Lord Prabhu Taratna and Tathagata. I have seen and saluted the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata. I have seen Menguzri, the Prince Royal, as well as the Bodhisattva Bhaisagiraga, who was possessed of mighty knowledge and impetuosity, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Paradnasura. And these 8,400,000 myriads of Kotis of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas have all attained the meditation terms Sarvaru Prasandarsana. And while this relation of the going and coming of the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Gadgada, Zavara was being delivered, 42,000 Bodhisattvas acquired the faculty of acquiescence in future things. And the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Padmasri acquired the meditation called the Lotus of the True Law. Chapter 24 chapter called that of the all-sided one containing a description of the transformations of Abba Lokitasvara thereafter the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Akshayamati rose from his seat put his upper robe upon one shoulder stretched his joined hands towards the Lord and said for what reason O Lord is the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara called Avalokitesvara? So he asked, and the Lord answered to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aksha Yamati. All the hundred thousands of myriads of Kotis, of creatures, young men of good family, who in this world are suffering troubles, will, if they hear the name of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara, be released from that mass of troubles. Those who shall keep the name of this Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara, young man of good family, will, if they fall into a great mass of fire, be delivered therefrom by virtue of the luster of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva. In case young man of good family creatures carried off by the current of rivers should implore the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara, all rivers will afford them a ford. In case young man of good family, many hundred thousands, myriads of Kotis of creatures sailing in a ship on the ocean, should see their bullion, gold, gems, pearls, lapis lazuli, conch shells, stones, corals, emeralds, muzara galvas, reed pearls, and other goods lost, and the ship by a vehement, untimely gale cast on the island of giantesses. And if in that ship a single being implores Avalokitesvara, all will be saved from that island of giantesses. For that reason, young man of good family, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara is named Avalokitesvara. If a man given up to capital punishment implores Avalokitesvara, young man of good family, the swords of the executioners shall snap asunder. Further, young man of good family, if the whole triple Chiliocosm were teeming with goblins and giants, they would, by virtue of the name of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara, being pronounced lose the faculty of sight in their wicked designs if some creature young man of good family shall be bound in wooden or iron manacles chains or fetters be he guilty or innocent then those manacles chains or fetters shall give way as soon as the name of the bodhisattva mahasattva avalokitesvara is pronounced Such young man of good family is the power of the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Avalokitesvara. If this whole triple Chiliocosm, young man of good family, were teeming with knaves, enemies, and robbers armed with swords, and if a merchant leader of a caravan marched with the caravan rich in jewels, if then they perceived these robbers, 
knaves and enemies armed with swords, and in their anxiety and fright thought themselves helpless. If further that leading merchant spoke to the caravan in this strain, be not afraid, young gentlemen, be not frightened. Invoke all of you with one voice the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Avalokitesvara, the giver of safety. Then you shall be delivered from this danger by which you are threatened at the hands of robbers and enemies. If then the whole caravan with one voice invoked Avalokitesvara with the words, Adoration, adoration be to the giver of safety, to Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Then by the mere act of pronouncing that name, the caravan would be released from all danger. Such young man of good family is the power of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara. In case creatures act under the impulse of impure passion, young man of good family, they will, after adoring the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara, be freed from passion. Those who act under the impulse of hatred will, after adoring the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara, be freed from hatred. Those who act on the impulse of infatuation will act during the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara be freed from infatuation. So mighty young man of good family is the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara. If a woman desirous of male offspring young man of good family adores the Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara she shall get a son, nice, handsome, and beautiful, one possessed of the characteristics of a male child, generally beloved and winning, who has planted good roots. If a woman is desirous of getting a daughter, a nice, handsome, beautiful girl shall be born to her, one possessed of the good characteristics of a girl, generally beloved and winning, who has planted good roots. Such young man of good family is the power of the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva Avalokitesvara. Those who adore the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara will derive from it an unfailing profit. Suppose young man of good family, on one hand, someone adoring the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara and cherishing his name. On the other hand, another adoring the number of Lord's Buddhas equal to 62 times the sands of the river Ganges, cherishing their names and worshipping so many Lord's Buddhas during their stay, existence, and life by giving robes, alms bowls, couches, medicaments for the sick. How great is then, in thine opinion, young man of good family, the accumulation of pious merit which that young gentleman or young lady will produce in consequence of it. So asked the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Akshamyamati said to the Lord, Great, O Lord, great, O Sugata, is the pious merit which that young gentleman or young lady will produce in consequence of it. The Lord proceeded, Now, young man of good family, the accumulation of pious merit produced by that young gentleman paying homage to so many lords buddhas and the accumulation of pious merit produced by him who performs were it but a single act of adoration to the bodhisattva mahasattva avalokitesvara and cherishes his name are equal he who adores a number of lords buddhas equal to 62 times the sands of the river ganges and cherishes their names and he who adores the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara and cherishes his name have an equal accumulation of pious merit. Both masses of pious merit are not easy to be destroyed even in hundred thousands of myriads of cotis of aeons. So immense young man of good family is the pious merit resulting from cherishing the name of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara. Again, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva 
Akshamati said to the Lord, How, O Lord, is it that the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara frequents this Saha world? And how does he preach the law? And which is the range of the skillfulness of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara? So asked the Lord, replied <coughs> to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aksha Yamati. In some worlds, young man of good family, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara preaches the law to creatures in the shape of a Buddha. In others, he does so in the shape of a Bodhisattva. To some beings, he shows the law in the shape of a Pratyaka Buddha. To others, he does so in the shape of a disciple. To others, again, under that of Brahma, Indra, or a Gandharva. To those who are to be converted by a goblin, he preaches the law assuming the shape of a goblin. To those who are to be converted by his vara, he preaches the law in the shape of his vara. To those who are to be converted by Mahasvara, he preaches assuming the shape of Mahasvara. To those who are to be converted by a Kakravartan, he shows the law after assuming the shape of a Kakravartan. To those who are to be converted by an imp, he shows the law under the shape of an imp. To those who are to be converted by Kubera, he shows the law by appearing in the shape of Kubera. To those who are to be converted by Senapati, he preaches in the shape of Senapati. To those who are to be converted by assuming a Brahmin, he preaches in the shape of a Brahmin. To those who are to be converted by Vagrapani, he preaches in the shape of Vagrapani. With such inconceivable qualities, young man of good family is the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Avalokitesvara endowed. Therefore then, young man of good family, honor the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Avalokitesvara. The Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Avalokitesvara. Young man of good family affords safety to those who are in anxiety. On that account, one calls him in this Saha world, Abhiyandada i.e. giver of safety. Further, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Akshayamati said to the Lord, Shall we give a gift of piety, a decoration of piety? O Lord, to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara, the Lord replied, Do so, if thou thinkest it opportune. Then the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Akshayamati took from his neck a pearl necklace worth a hundred thousand gold pieces and presented it to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara as a decoration of piety with the words Receive from me this decoration of piety, good man but he would not accept it Then the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Akshayamati said to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara Out of compassion to us, young man of good family Accept this pearl necklace. Then the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara accepted the pearl necklace from the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aksha Yamati out of compassion to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aksha Yamati and the four classes and out of compassion to the gods, Nagas, Goblins, Gandharvas, Demons, Garudas, Kinaras, Great Serpents, Men, and Beings Not Human. Thereafter, he divided the necklace into two parts and offered one part to the Lord Sakyamuni and the other to the jewel stupa of the Lord Prabhuturatna, the Tathagata, who had become completely extinct. With such a faculty of transformation, young man with good family, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Avalokitesvara is moving in this Saha world. And on that occasion, the Lord uttered the following stanzas. Kidradvaga asked Akshayamati the following question, For what reason son of Jina is Avalokitesvara so called? And Akshayamati, that ocean of profound insight, after considering how the matter stood, spoke to Kidradvaga, Listen to the conduct of Avalokitesvara. Hear from my indication how, for numerous inconceivable aeons, he has accomplished his vote under many thousand Kotis of Buddhas, 
Hearing, seeing regularly, and constantly thinking will infallibly destroy all suffering, mundane existence, and grief of living beings here on earth. If one be thrown into a pit of fire by a wicked enemy with the object of killing him, he has but to think of Avalokitesvara. And the fire shall be quenched as if sprinkled with water. If one happens to fall into the dreadful ocean, the abode of Nagas, marine monsters and demons, he has but to think of Avalokitesvara, and he shall never sink down in the king of waters. If a man happens to be hurled down from the brink of the Meru by some wicked person with the object of killing him, he has but to think of Ava Lokitisvara, and he shall sunlike stand firm in the sky. If rocks of thunderstone and thunderbolts are thrown at a man's head to kill him, he has but to think of Ava Lokitisvara, and they shall not be able to hurt one hair of the body. If a man be surrounded by a host of enemies, armed with swords, who have the intention of killing him, he has but to think of Avalokitesvara, and they shall instantaneously become kind-hearted. If a man delivered to the power of the executioners is already standing at the place of execution, he has but to think of Avalokitesvara, and their swords shall go to pieces. <coughs> If a person happens to be fettered in shackles of wood or iron, he has but to think of Avalokitesvara, and the bonds shall be speedily loosened. Mighty spells, witchcraft, herbs, ghosts, and specters, pernicious to life, revert thither whence they come when one thinks of Avalokitesvara. If a man is surrounded by goblins, nagas, demons, ghosts, or giants, who are in the habit of taking away bodily vigor, he is but to think of Avalokitesvara, and they shall not be able to hurt one hair of his body. If a man is surrounded by fearful beasts with sharp teeth and claws, he is but to think of Avalokitesvara, and they shall quickly fly in all directions. If a man is surrounded by snakes, malicious and frightful on account of the flames and fires they emit, he is but to think of Avalokitesvara, and they shall quickly lose their poison. If a heavy thunderbolt shoots from a cloud pregnant with lightning and thunder, one has but to think of Avalokitesvara, and the fire of heaven shall quickly instantaneously be quenched. He, Avalokitesvara, with his powerful knowledge, beholds all creatures who are beset with many hundreds of troubles and afflicted by many sorrows, and thereby is a savior in the world, including the gods. As he is thoroughly practiced in the power of magic, and possessed of vast knowledge and skillfulness, he shows himself in all directions and in all regions of the world. Birth, decrepitude, and disease will come to an end for those who are in the wretched states of existence in hell, in brute creation, in the kingdom of Yama, for all beings in general. Then Aksha Yamati, in the joy of his heart, uttered the following stanzas O thou whose eyes are clear, whose eyes are kind, Distinguished by wisdom and knowledge, whose eyes are full of pity and benevolence, thou so lovely by thy beautiful face and beautiful eyes. Pure one, whose shine is spotless bright, whose knowledge is free from darkness, thou shining as the sun, not to be beaten away, radiant as the blaze of fire, thou spreadest in thy flying course thy luster in the world. O thou who rejoicest in kindness, having its source in compassion, thou great cloud of good qualities and of benevolent mind, thou quenchest the fire that vexes living beings, thou pourest out nectar, the rain of the law. In quarrel, dispute, war, battle, and any great danger, one has to think of Avalokitesvara, who shall quell the wicked troop of foes. One should think of Avalokitesvara, whose sound is as the clouds and the drums. Who thunders like a rain cloud, possesses a good voice like Brahma, a voice going through the whole gamut of tones. Think, O oh, think, with tranquil mood of Avalokitesvara, that pure being. He is a protector, a refuge, a recourse in death, disaster, and calamity. He who possesses the perfection of all virtues, and beholds all beings with compassion and benevolence, he, an ocean of virtues, virtue itself, he, Avalokitesvara, is worthy of adoration. 
He so compassionate for the world shall once become a Buddha, destroying all dangers and sorrows. I humbly vow to Avalokitesvara. This universal Lord, chief of kings, who is a rich mine of monastic virtues, he universally worshipped, has reached pure supreme enlightenment after applying his course of duty during many hundreds of aeons. At one time, standing to the right, at another to the left, the chief Amitabha, whom he is fanning, he by dint of meditation, like a phantom in all regions, honors the Gina. In the west, where the pure world, Sukhakara, is situated there, the chief Amitabha, the tamer of men, has his fixed abode. There no women are to be found. There, sexual intercourse is absolutely unknown. There, the sons of Gina, on springing into existence by apparitional birth, are sitting in the undefiled cups of lotuses. And the chief Amitabha himself is seated on a throne in the pure and nice cup of a lotus and shines as the Sala King. The leader of the world, whose store of merit has been praised, has no equal in the triple world. O supreme of men, let us soon become like thee. Thereupon, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Dara Nindara, rose from his seat, put his upper robe upon one shoulder, faced his right knee against the earth, stretched his joined hands towards the Lord, and said, They must be possessed of not a few good roots. O Lord, who art to hear this chapter from the Dharma Paryaya about the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Avalokitesvara, and this miraculous power, the transformation of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Avalokitesvara. And while this chapter of the All-Sided One was being expounded by the Lord, 84,000 living beings from that assembly felt their minds drawn to that supreme and perfect enlightenment with which nothing else can be compared. Chapter 25 Ancient Devotion Thereupon the Lord addressed the entire assemblage of Bodhisattvas. Of your young man of good family at a past epoch, incalculable more than incalculable aeons ago. At that time there appeared in the world a Tathagata named Galadhara Gargita Goshasusvaranakshatara Ragasan Kusumita Bigna. An Arhat endowed with science and conduct. In the Aeon Priya Darsana in the world Virokanarasmi Pratimandita. Now there was a young man of good family under the spiritual rule of the Tathagata Gala Dara Gargita Goshasus Varana Kashadara Gun Sakusumita Bigna, a king called Subavuya. That king Subavuya, young man of good family, had a wife called Vimaladatta, and two sons, one called Vimalagarbha, the other Vimalanetra. These two boys who possessed magical power and wisdom applied themselves to the course of duty of bodhisattvas, namely to the perfect virtues, paramitas, of almsgiving, morality, forbearance, energy, meditation, wisdom, and skillfulness. They were accomplished in benevolence, compassion, joyful sympathy, and indifference, and in all the 37 constituents of true knowledge. They had perfectly mastered the meditation Vimala, spotless, the meditation Nakshatra Ragaditya, the meditation Vimala Nirbhasa, the meditation Vimala Basa, the meditation Alankarasura, and the meditation Mahatagu Garba. And at the time, that period, the said Lord preached the Dharma Paryaya, the Lotus of the True Law, out of compassion for the beings, then living in for the king Sub of Vyua. Then young man of good family, the two young princes, Vima Lagarba and Vima Lanetra, went to their mother, to whom they said, after stretching their joined hands, We should like to go, mother, to the Lord Galandargarga, to Gosha Susvarana, Shatra, San Kusumita, Bigna, and Tathagata, and that mother, because the Lord Galandargarga, to Gosha Susvarana, Kshatra, Gasan Kusumita, Bigna, the Tathagata expounds in great extension. Before the world, including the gods, the Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law, we should like to hear it. Whereupon the queen Vimaladatta said to the two young princes, Vimalagarbha and Vimalanetra, Your father, young gentleman, the king Sibhavyo, 
favors the Brahmins, therefore you will not obtain the permission to go and see the Talakata. Then the two young princes, Vimala Garba and Vimala Netra, stretching their joined hands, said to their mother, Though born in a family that adheres to a false doctrine, we feel as sons to the king of the law. Then young men of good family, the queen Vimala Datta, said to the young princes, Well, young gentlemen, out of compassion for your father, the king Siva Vayuha, display some miracle that he may become favorably inclined to you, and on that account grant you the permission of going to the Lord Galadara Gargita Goshasus Varan Kashatra Gasan Kusumitabigna the Tathagata. Immediately the young princes Vimala Garba and Vimala Netra rose into the atmosphere to a height of seven tall trees and performed miracles such as are allowed by the Buddha out of compassion for their father the king Sibhaviyuha. They prepared in the sky a couch and raised dust. There they also emitted from the lower part of their body a shower of rain, and from the upper part a mass of fire. Then again they emitted from the upper part of their body a shower of rain, and from the lower part a mass of fire. While in the firmament they became now big, then small, and now small, then big. Then they vanished from the sky to come up again from the earth and reappear in the air. Such young men of good family were the miracles produced. <clears throat> by the magical power of the two young princes, whereby their father, the king Subhavyua, was converted. At the sight of the miracle produced by the magical power of the two young princes, the king Subhavyua was content, in high spirits, ravished, rejoiced, joyful, and happy. And the joined hands raised, he said to the boys, Who is your master, young gentleman? Whose pupils are you? And the two young princes answered the king Subhavyua, There is noble king, there exists and lives a lord. Seated on the stool of the law, at the foot of the tree of enlightenment, he extensively reveals the Dharma Pariyaya of the lotus of the true law to the world, including the gods. That Lord is our master, O noble king, we are his pupils. Then, young gentlemen of good family, the king Siva Vyua said to the young princess, I will see your master, young gentlemen. I am to go myself to the presence of that Lord. After the two young princes had descended from the sky, young gentlemen, they went to their mother, and with joined hands stretched forward, said to her, Mother, we have converted our father to supreme and perfect knowledge. We have performed the office of masters towards him. Therefore, let us go now. We wish to enter upon the ecclesiastical life in the face of the Lord. And on that occasion, young men of good family, the young princes, Vimala Garva and Vimala Netra, addressed their mother in the following two stanzas. <coughs> Allow us, O mother, to go forth from home to embrace the houseless life. I, we will become ascetics, for rare to be met with or precious is a talagata. As the blossom of the agglomerated fig tree, nay, more rare is the jina. Let us depart. We will renounce the world. The favorable moment is precious, or not often to be met with. Vimaladada said, Now I grant you leave. Go, my children. I give my consent. I myself will likewise renounce the world, for where to be met with, or precious, is a Tathagata. Having uttered these stanzas, Young men of good family, the two young princes said to their parents, Pray, father and mother, you also go together with us to the Lord Galadara Gargita Gosha Susvarana Kshatara Gasan Kusumita Bigna Tathagata, in order to see, humbly salute, and wait upon him, and to hear the law. For father and mother, the appearance of a Buddha is rare to be met with, as the blossom of the agglomerated fig tree, as the entering of the tortoise's neck into the hole of the yoke formed by the great ocean. The appearance of Lord's Buddha's father and mother is rare. Hence, father and mother, it is a happy lot we have been blessed with, to have been born at the time of such a prophet, therefore. Father and mother, give us leave, we would go and become ascetics in presence of the Lord. Galadara Gagita Gosha Susvaran Kasataragasan Kusumita Bigna the Tathagata. For the seeing of a Tathagata is something rare. Such a king of the law is rarely met with. Such a favorable occasion is rarely met with. Now at that juncture, young men of good family, the 84,000 women of the harem of the king Subayavuya became worthy of being receptacles of this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law. The young prince, Vimalanetra, exercised himself in this Dharma Pariyaya 
whereas the young prince Vimalagarbha, for many hundred thousand myriads of Kotis and Vayans, practiced the meditation Sarva Sattva Papaganhana with the object that all beings should abandon all evils. And the mother of the two young princes, the queen Vimaladatta, acknowledged the harmony between all Buddhas and all topics treated by them. Then, young men of good family, the king Subhavuyuha, having been converted to the law of the Tathagata by the instrumentality of the two young princes, having been initiated and brought to full maturity in it, along with all his relations and retinue, the queen, Vimaladatta, with the whole crowd of women in her suite, and the two young princes, the sons of the king Subhavuyuha, accompanied by 42,000 living beings, Along with the women of the harem and the ministers went all together and unanimously to the Lord Galadaraga Gita Gosha Susvaran Kashatara Gasan Kusimita Bigna the Tathagata. On arriving at the place where the Lord was, they humbly saluted his feet, circumambulated him three times from left to right, and took their stand at some distance. Then young men of good family, the Lord Galadaraga Gita Gosha Susvaran Kashatara perceiving the king Subhavayuha, who had arrived with his retinue, instructed, roused, excited, and comforted him with a sermon. And the king Subhavayuha, a young man of good family, under he had been well and duly instructed, roused, excited, and comfortably by the sermon of the Lord, was so content, glad, ravished, joyful, rejoiced, and delighted that he put his diadem on the head of his younger brother and established him in the government whereafter he himself with his sons, kinsmen, and retinue as well as the queen Vimadalta and her numerous train of women and the two young princes accompanied by 42,000 living beings went all together and unanimously forth from home to embrace the houseless life prompted as they were by their faith in the preaching of the Lord Gala Dagari Gita Gosususurana Kashataka Gassan Kusimita Bignam Taliata Having become an ascetic, the king Subhavayuha, with his retinue, remained for 84,000 years, applying himself to studying, meditating, and thoroughly penetrating this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law. At the end of those 84,000 years, young men of good family, the king Subhavayuha acquired the meditation terms Sarva Guna Lan Karaviyuha. No sooner had he acquired that meditation. Then he rose seven tiles up to the sky, and while staying in the air, young men of good family, the king Subhavayuha said to the Lord Galadagaragita Gosha Susvaran Kashataraga Sankusumita Bignam the Tathagata. My Lord, my two sons, O Lord, are my masters, since it is owing to the miracle produced by their magical power that I have been diverted from that great heap of false doctrines been established in the command of the Lord, brought to full ripeness in it, introduced to it, and exhorted to see the Lord. They have acted as true friends to me, O Lord, those two young princes who as sons were born in my house, certainly to remind me of my former roots of goodness. At these words, the Lord Galad Araga Gita Gosha Susvaranka Shataraga Sanka Sumita Bigna and Tathagata spoke to the king Subhavayuha. It is as thou sayest, noble king, indeed, noble king, such young men or young ladies of good family as possess roots of goodness will in any existence, state, descent, rebirth, or place easily find true friends who with them shall perform the task of a master, who shall admonish, introduce, fully prepare them to obtain supreme and perfect enlightenment. It is an exalted position, noble king, the office of a true friend who rouses another to see the Tathagata. Dost thou see these two young princes, noble king? I do, Lord, I do, Sugata, said the king. The Lord proceeded. Now these two young gentlemen, noble king, will pay worship to sixty-five times the number of Tathagatas. Equal to the sands of the Ganges, they will keep this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law out of compassion for beings who hold false doctrines. And with the aim to produce in those beings an earnest striving after the right doctrine. Thereupon, young man of good family, the king Subhavayuha came down from the sky, and having raised his joined hands, said to the Lord Galadaraga Gita Gosha Susvaran Kashataraga San Kusimita Bigna the Tathagata, 
Please, Lord, deign to tell me what knowledge the Tathagata is possessed of, so that the protuberance on his head is shining, that the Lord's eyes are so clear, that between his brows the urna, the circle of hair, is shining, resembling in whiteness the moon, that in his mouth a row of equal and closed standing teeth is glittering, that the Lord has lips red as the bimba, and such beautiful eyes. As the king Suba Viuha, young men of good family, has celebrated the Lord Galadaraga Gita Gosha Susvaran Kashatara Gasan Kusumita Bigna, the Tathagata by enumerating so many good qualities and hundred thousands of myriads of coatees of other good qualities. Besides, he said to the Lord Galad, Aragargita Gosha Susvaranka Satara Kusimita Bigna. The Tathagata. It is wonderful, O Lord, how valuable the Tathagata's teaching is, and with how many inconceivable virtues the religious discipline proclaimed by the Tathagata is attended. How beneficial the moral precepts proclaimed by the Tathagata are. From henceforward, O Lord, we will no more be slaves to our own mind. No more be slaves to false doctrine. No more slaves to rashness. No more slaves to the sinful thoughts arising in us. Being possessed of so many good qualities, O Lord, I do not wish to go away from the presence of the Lord. After humbly saluting the feet of the Lord, the Tathagata, the king rose up to the sky and stood there. Thereupon, the king Suba Vyu and the queen Vimaladatta from the sky threw a pearl necklace worth a hundred thousand gold pieces upon the Lord, and that pearl necklace no sooner came down upon the head of the Lord than it assumed the shape of a tower with four columns. Well, regular, well constructed, and beautiful. On the summit of the tower appeared a couch covered with many hundred thousand pieces of fine cloth, and on the couch was seen the image of a Tathagata sitting cross-legged. Then the following thought presented itself to the king Subhavayuha. The Buddha knowledge must be very powerful, and the Tathagata endowed with inconceivable good qualities. That this Tathagata image shows itself on the summit of the tower, an image so nice, beautiful, possessed of an extreme abundance of good colors. Then the Lord Galadara Gargita Gosha Susvaranka Shatara Gasanka Sutima Bigna. The Tathagata addressed the four classes and asked, Do you see, monks, the king Subhaviya? Who is standing in the sky is emitting a lion's roar? They answered, We do, Lord. The Lord proceeded, This king, Subhavayuha, amongst, after having become a monk, under my rule, shall become a Tathagata. In the world by the name of Salendraga, endowed with science and conduct, in the world, Vistir Navati, his epoch shall be called Abhidgataraga. The Tathagata Salendra Raga, amongst the Arhat, shall have an immense congregation of Bodhisattvas, an immense congregation of disciples. The said world, Vistir Navati, shall be level as the palm of the hand, and consist of lapis lazuli. So he shall be an inconceivably great Tathagata. Perhaps, young men of good family, you will have some doubt, uncertainty, or misgiving, and think that the king, Subhavayuha, at that time, that juncture, was another. But you must not think so, for it is the very same Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, and Padmasri, here present, who at that time, that juncture, was the king, Subhavayuha. Perhaps, young men of good family, you will have some doubt, uncertainty, or misgiving, and think that the Queen Vimaladatta at that time, that juncture, was another. But you must not think so, for it is the very same Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, called Vairokhanarasmi Pratimanditaraga, who at that time, that juncture, was the Queen Vimaladatta, and who, out of compassion for the King Subhavayuha, 
and the creatures had assumed the state of being the wife of King Suvayvuyuha, perhaps young man of good family. You will have some doubt, uncertainty, or misgiving, and think that the two young princes were others, but you must not think so. For it was Baishagiraga and Baishagiraga Smudgata who at that time, that juncture, were sons to the king. Subhav Vyuha with such inconceivable qualities. Young men of good family were the Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, Baishagiraga and Baishagiraga Smudgata. Endowed they, the two good men, having planted good roots under many hundred thousand myriads of kotis of Buddhas. Those that shall cherish the name of these two good men shall all become worthy of receiving homage from the world, including the gods. While this chapter on ancient devotion was being expounded, the spiritual insight of 84,000 living beings in respect to the law was purified so as to become unclouded and spotless. Chapter 26 Encouragement of Samantabhadra Thereupon the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Samantabhadra in the east, surrounded and followed by Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, surpassing all calculation amid the stirring of fields, a rain of lotuses, the playing of hundred thousands of myriads of kotis of musical instruments, proceeded with the great pomp of a bodhisattva, the great display of transformations proper to a bodhisattva, the great magnificence of a bodhisattva, the great power of a bodhisattva, the great luster of a glorious bodhisattva, the great stately march of a bodhisattva, the great miraculous display of a bodhisattva, a great phantasmagorical sight of gods, nagas, goblins, gandharvas, demons, garudas, kinaras, great serpents, men and beings not human, who, produced by his magic, surrounded and followed him. Samanta Bhadra then, the Bodhisattva, amid such inconceivable miracles worked by magic, arrived at this Saha world. He went up to the place of the Lord on the Gridrakuta, the king of mountains, and on approaching he humbly saluted the Lord's feet made seven circumambulations from left to right and said to the Lord, I have come hither, O Lord, from the field of the Lord Ratna Te Gobiyudgata, the Tathagata. As I am aware, Lord, that here in the Saha world is taught the Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law to hear which from the mouth of Lord Sakyamuni. I have come accompanied by these hundred thousands of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, May the Lord deign to expound in extension this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law to these Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas. So addressed, the Lord said to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Samantabhadra, These Bodhisattvas, young man of good family, are indeed quick of understanding, but this is the Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law, that is to say, an unmixed truth. The Bodhisattvas exclaimed, Indeed, Lord, indeed, Sugata, then in order to confirm in the Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law, the females among the monks, nuns, and lay devotees assembled at the gathering. The Lord again spoke to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Samantabhadra. This Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law, young man of good family, shall be entrusted to a female if she be possessed of four requisites, to wit, she shall stand under the superintendence of the Lord's Buddhas. She shall have planted good roots. She shall keep steadily to the mass of disciplinary regulations. She shall, in order to save creatures, have the thoughts fixed on supreme and perfect enlightenment. These are the four requisites, young man of good family, a female must be possessed of to whom this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law is to be entrusted. Then the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Samantabhadra said to the Lord, At the end of time, at the end of the period, in the second half of the millennium, I will protect the monks who keep the Sutranta. I will take care of their safety, avert blows, and destroy poison, so that no one laying snares for those preachers may surprise them, neither Mara, 
the evil one, nor the sons of Mara, the angels called Mara Kaikas, the daughters of Mara, the followers of Mara, and all other servitors to Mara, that no gods, goblins, ghosts, imps, wizards, specters, laying snares, for those preachers may surprise them. Incessantly and constantly, O Lord, will I protect such a preacher. And when a preacher who applies himself to this Dharma Paryaya shall take a walk, then, O Lord, will I mount a white elephant with six tusks, and with a train of bodhisattvas betake myself to the place where that preacher is walking, in order to protect this Dharma Paryaya. And when that preacher applying himself to this Dharma Paryaya forgets, be it but a single word or syllable, then will I mount the white elephant with six tusks. Show my face to that preacher and repeat this entire Dharma Paryaya. And when the preacher has seen my proper body and heard from me this entire Dharma Paryaya, he, content in high spirits, ravished, rejoiced, joyful, and delighted, will the more do his utmost to study this Dharma Paryaya. And immediately after beholding me, he will acquire meditation and obtain spells termed the talisman of preservation, the talisman of hundred thousand kotis, and the talisman of skill in all sounds. Again, Lord, the monks, nuns, male or female lay devotees, who at the end of time, at the end of the period, in the second half of the millennium, shall study this Dharma Paryaya when walking for three weeks, or twenty-one days, to them will I show my body at the sight of which all beings rejoice, mounted on that same white elephant with six tusks, and surrounded by a troop of bodhisattvas, I shall on the twenty-first day betake myself to the place where the preachers are walking. There I shall rouse, excite, and stimulate them, and give them spells, whereby those preachers shall become inviolable, so that no being, either human or not human, shall be able to surprise them and no women able to beguile them i will protect them take care of their safety avert blows and destroy poison i will besides O lord give those preachers words of talismanic spells such as nadande dandapati dandavartani dandu kasale dandu sudari dari sudharapati buddha pasyani Dharani, Avartani, Samvartani, Sangha Parikshita, Sangar Nirkatani, Dharma Parikshiti, Sarvasatvarutaka Solanagate, Simavirikiditi. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva, whose organ of hearing is struck by these talismanic words, Lord, shall be aware that the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Samantabhadra is their ruling power. Further, Lord, the Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, to whom this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law shall be entrusted, as long as it continues having course in Gambudvipa, those preachers, Lord, should take this view. It is owing to the power and grandeur of the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Samantabhadra, that this Dharma Paryaya has been entrusted to us. Those creatures who shall write and keep this sutra, O Lord, are to partake of this course of duty of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Samantabhadra. They will belong to those who have planted good roots under many Buddhas, O Lord, and whose heads are caressed by the hands of the Tathagata. Those who shall write and keep this sutra, O Lord, will afford me pleasure. Those who shall write this sutra, O Lord, and comprehend it, shall, when they disappear from this world after having written it, be reborn in the company of the gods of paradise, and at that birth shall eighty-four thousand heavenly nymphs immediately come near them. Adorned with a high crown, they shall, as angels, dwell amongst those nymphs. Such is the mass of merit resulting from writing this Dharma Paryaya. How much greater will be the mass of merit reaped by those who recite, study, meditate, remember it? Therefore, young men of good family, one ought to honor this Dharma Paryaya. 
of the Lotus of the True Law and write it with the utmost attention. He who writes it with undistracted attention shall be supported by the hands of a thousand Buddhas. And at the moment of his death he shall see another thousand of Buddhas from face to face. He shall not sink down into a state of wretchedness. And after disappearing from this world he shall enter the company of the Tushita gods, where the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Maitriya is residing, and where, marked by the thirty-two sublime characteristics, surrounded by a host of Bodhisattvas, and weighed upon by hundred thousands of myriads of Kotis of heavenly nymphs, he is preaching the law. Therefore, then, young men of good family, a wise young man or young lady of good family, should respectfully write this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law. Respectfully recite it, respectfully study it, respectfully treasure it up in his or her mind. By writing, reciting, studying this Dharma Pariyaya, and by treasuring it up in one's mind, young men of good family, one is to acquire innumerable good qualities. Hence, a wise young man or young lady of good family ought to keep this Dharma Pariyaya of the Lotus of the True Law. I myself, O Lord, will superintend this Dharma Pariyaya, that through my superintendence it may here spread in Gambudvipa. Then the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, expressed his approval to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Samantabhadra, very well, very well, Samantabhadra. It is happy that thou art so well disposed to promote the well and happiness of the people at large, out of compassion for the people, for the benefit, well, and happiness of the great body of men, that thou art endowed with such inconceivable qualities, with a mind so full of compassion, with intentions so inconceivably kind, so that of thine own accord, thou wilt take those creatures under thy protection. A young man of good family who shall cherish the name of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Samantabhadra may be convinced that they have seen Sakyamuni the Tathagata, that they have heard this Dharma Paryaya of the Lotus of the True Law from the Lord Sakyamuni, that they have paid homage to the Tathagata Sakyamuni, that they have applauded the preaching of the Tathagata Sakyamuni. They will have joyfully accepted this Dharma Paryaya. The Tathagata Sakyamuni will have laid his hand upon their head, and they will have decked the Lord Sakyamuni with their robes. Those young men or young ladies of good family, Samantabhadra, must be held to have accepted the command of the Tathagata. They will have no pleasure in worldly philosophy. No persons fondly addicted to poetry will please them. No dancers, athletes, vendors of meat, mutton butchers, poulterers, pork butchers, or profligates will please them. After having heard, written, kept, or read such sutrantas as this, they will find no delight in those persons. They must be held to be possessed of natural righteousness. They will be right-minded from themselves, possess the power to do good of their own accord, and make an agreeable impression on others. Such will be the monks who keep this sutranta. No passion and attachment will hinder them. No hatred, no infatuation, no jealousy, no envy, no hypocrisy, no pride, no conceitedness, no mendaciousness. Those preachers, Samantabhadra, will be content with what they receive. He, Samantabhadra, who at the end of time, at the end of the period, in the second half of the millennium, sees a monk keeping this Dharma Pariyaya, and the lotus of the true law, must think thus. This young man of good family will reach the terrace of enlightenment. This young man will conquer the troop of the wicked Mara, move forward the wheel of the law, strike the drum of the law, blow the conch trumpet of the law, spread the reign of the law, and ascend the royal throne of the law. The monks who at the end of time, at the end of the period, in the second half of the millennium, keep this Dharma Pariyaya will not be covetous, nor greedy of robes or vehicles. Those preachers will be honest and possessed of three emancipations. They will refrain from worldly business, such persons as lead into error monks who know of this sutranta. Shall be born blind, and such as openly defame them shall have a spotted body in this very world. Those who scoff and hoot at the monks who copy this sutranta 
shall have the teeth broken and separated far from each other. Disgusting lips. A flat nose, contorted hands and feet, squinting eyes, a putrid body. A body covered with stinking boils, eruptions, scabs, and itch. If one speaks an unkind word, true or not true, to such writers, readers, and keepers of the Sutranta, it must be considered a very heinous sin. Therefore then, Samanta Bhadra, people should, even from afar, rise from their seats before the monks who keep this Dharma Pariyaya and show them the same reverence as to the Tathagata. While this chapter of the encouragement of Samanta Bhadra was being expounded, hundred thousands of kotis of bodhisattvas, mahasattvas, equal to the sands of the river Ganges, acquired the talismanic spell Avarta. Chapter 27 The Period Thereupon the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, rose from his pulpit, collected the bodhisattvas, took their right hands with his own right hand, which had become strong by the exercise of magic, and spoke on that occasion as follows, Into your hands, young men of good family, I transfer and transmit, and trust and deposit this supreme and perfect enlightenment arrived at by me, after a hundred thousands of myriads, of cotis of incalculable aeons. Ye young men of good family, do your best that it may grow and spread. A second time, a third time, the Lord spoke to the host of bodhisattvas after taking them by the right hands. Into your hands, young men of good family, I transfer and transmit and trust and deposit the supreme and perfect enlightenment arrived at by me after hundred thousands of myriads of cotis of incalculable aeons. Receive it, young men of good family, keep, read, fathom, teach, promulgate, and preach it to all beings. I am not avaricious, young men of good family, nor narrow-minded. I am confident and willing to impart Buddha knowledge, to impart the knowledge of the Tathagata, the knowledge of the self-born. I am a bountiful giver, young men of good family, and ye, young men of good family, follow my example. Imitate me in liberally showing this knowledge of the Tathagata, and in skillfulness and preach this Dharma Pariyaya to the young men and young ladies of good family who successively shall gather round you. And as to unbelieving persons, rouse them to accept this law. By so doing, young men of good family, you will acquit your debt to the Tathagatas. So addressed by the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, the Bodhisattvas filled with delight and joy and with a feeling of great respect, they lowered, bent, and bowed their body towards the Lord, and the head inclined and the joined hands stretched out. They spoke in one voice to the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, the following words, We shall do, O Lord, what the Tathagata commands. We shall fulfill the command of all Tathagatas. Let the Lord be at ease as to this, and perfectly quiet. A second time, a third time, the entire host of Bodhisattvas spoke in one voice the same words. Let the Lord be at ease as to this, and perfectly quiet. We shall do, O Lord, what the Tathagata commands us. We shall fulfill the command of all Tathagatas. Thereupon, the Lord Sakyamuni, the Tathagata, dismissed all those Tathagatas who had come to the gathering from other worlds, and wished them a happy existence with the words, May the Tathagatas live happy. Then he restored the stupa of precious substances of the Lord Prabhu Taratna, the Tathagata, to its place and wished him also a happy existence. Thus spoke the Lord. The incalculable, innumerable Tathagatas who had come from other worlds and were sitting on their thrones at the foot of jewel trees as well as Prabhu Taratna, the Tathagata, and the whole host of Bodhisattvas headed by Visish Takaraita, the innumerable incalculable Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas, who had issued from the gaps of the earth, the great disciples, the four classes of the world, including gods, men, demons, and Gandharvas, in ecstasy applauded the words of the Lord. End of book.